Uh, hello. This is just gonna be a basic. This is just gonna be a tutorial covering the basics of uh the new or not very new, the Vertigo 2 sandbox, because I am just addicted to it. It's like ketamine for me. Uh, I'm going to start off by showing you actually how to get uh the sandbox. If you already know this and you already have it, uh, skip to the, skip to the uh time code right there. So you're gonna start off. You're gonna hit this. And you're gonna go to properties. Once you've got gone to properties, you're gonna click this. And it's gonna say none. Just click, uh, click this and click sandbox. And then you will have to update it. And then once you have that update installed. All right. Once you have Vertigo 2 open, you're gonna look in the top right, and it's gonna say sandbox beta. Click that. Okay. <laughs> now. You'll load into this little area right here. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about these. You're just gonna click create new level. And you can click whichever environment you want. I'm just gonna do, uh, default outdoor. You're gonna click create, and you're gonna load into here. Now, there are many things here. You might get a bit overwhelmed. First, you have, you're, you're gonna see this little thing. This is the player spawn. This is where you choose... Where you want the player to spawn. So if you set your character all the way up here, then you click play, you're gonna spawn all the way up there. And it's gonna hurt. How to get out of the player thing? You're gonna go to your pause menu, obvious, obviously, and then you're gonna click exit. You'll go back into the editor mode. So you're gonna see these things. First is this sun thing. And you can control the lighting with the direction it goes. So if you want it to be nighttime, then you just point it directly upwards, and it will be nighttime. If you want it to be like super bright, then you point it downwards, and then it will be super bright. And you can set the intensity. Like if I want it to be ungodly bright, then you, you can do that. Or super dark. To the point where it's kind of bright. Uh, you could also do that. I like having my at uh, 0 0.5. And you can set the color. So whatever colors you want. I'm just going to keep mine at white for this tutorial. And you're going to see this. This is the ending thing thingy. So if you just go click play. And you walk into this. It's going to say level complete. Then you're going to see this. This one. Uh, let's you choose the ambience Right now it is set at field But you can go to any of these you can set the volume of it. Uh, then we've got this. This is the skybox You can well choose the skybox, you know, I can have it aether clouds Swamp uh, clouds, etc. You can set the rotation of it and you can also set the brightness of it So that's all the things that you're gonna see when you first spawn in then you have this menu for some reason your controller just goes through it but this is the play button that I've been using. You, well, it lets you spawn in as a player. The save button, which will let you save. The upload button, which I'm pretty sure lets you upload files or 3D models, but I'm not sure yet. And then first you're going to see uh, this little camera, and you can just use that. And then you press trigger, and then uh, it, uh, I don't know how to close it. Uh, I don't know how to close this thing. I had to reset my game. I don't know how to close that. Now, you're gonna see a little settings thing. Click that and it'll show all these things. This helps you edit the gravity. This is your player movement. Uh, you can toggle teleporting and jumping. Your player health, your enemy health, fall damage, ammo region, and then the visual, the fog density, fog color, and color grading. For some reason, nothing is in the environment. Alright, and then next you're gonna see edit nav bounds, which well, lets you it lets you edit the areas where the NPCs can move then you're gonna see editors options there will be snapping which it'll like snap oh, I guess the rock isn't working but it, it will uh, let things snap to like the ground and stuff and then you're gonna see drag select mode now what this does is pretty really helpful say you have a lot of Joe Jeffs you can choose to have the square thing like on your desktop and stuff or you could have circle 
which goes out, you could have, uh, whatever this one's called, I'm pretty sure just, yeah, you, you could, and, and you just have none. That's it for this little menu. Now it's time to get on to this menu. This one's pretty easy. You just use your X button, and it, it will open this up. We're gonna start off with, uh, creatures. So this is just a tab. You have robots, bosses, and aliens, and you scroll with the uh, left joystick. So you could just spawn in a bunch of these guys, you grab them. Oh, also, you know, so you have uh, Joseph Jeffrey. You grab them, you see this little thing right there? You put that into this little bottom thing, let go of trigger, they delete, and you hold things uh, with trigger. Now I will go to the dynamic things. Now I'm not going to get into all of these things because... <laughs> I don't really understand all of them, but uh, I will go over some basic ones. So we have the buttons. What these do is if you go to these, see this little electric thing? You can go and you can connect these to these little arrow things. I can say I want it to go up and down. I'll come up here to this button. I'll click it. It will open the door and it will close the door. Um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, but these these are just like things that will help with making your game a better experience instead of just, just shooting a bunch of things and that's all. So next we've got uh props. These are literally just well props. You know we've also got these dynamic things. You know uh, like jump pads and stuff. Also. Uh, I should probably tell you on how jump pads work. You can control where you land and the angle that you go at. So say I want to go super high. I can do that. Come over to the jump pad. And you will get launched in the angle and area that you chose. Now we have the cube. The basic shape. This is what you'll mainly be using for, uh, you know, building stuff. Stretch them, and make them go up and down. So for these things, we will need a cube for the next one, which is the texture thing. And you use the joystick. If you go down with the joystick, this thing goes up. So say I want this to be glass, I just click trigger on it. I want this to be a tile-like thing, I could just click trigger on it, and then that's what it will do. How you copy and paste stuff. This will be super helpful when making maps because with uh, walls, you know, I just want to make a room. So I go, you just click trigger, and you click B. That will copy it with npcs you can choose teams they are on and same with uh your character you just click trigger on your character and you can choose the weapons and the upgrades and then you can also choose the allegiance they are on i usually do rebel um because <laughs> they're better <laughs> and you can do the same thing with creatures so if you want this cube head to be uh nice to me i can put it on the rebels team with me or i can have them as aliens underscore friendly i don't know what a plank is but and then you can also get enemies to fight against each other if i get a mud runner a cube head and then i put this guy on the church team they will uh begin to attack each other as you can see um very very cool and also um they have you can configure their health their spawn vfx you can turn that on and off um, you can make the- you can have them, like, wander around, walk around and, and such. Uh, and then, you can also have them attack the player immediately. They don't even have to see the player. They just instantly go to attack you. So they will just instantly come and attack you. That is about the basics in this amazing, amazing sandbox. I look forward to seeing all the things that you guys can do. Yeah, that's about all.